Well, I'm working on this 1939 John Deere H for a friend of mine, and when we brought this tractor here, it was not running. It came from another guy's house who was storing it for him and did a little work on it, and uh, it hadn't run for a number of years. So when I got it here, I had to put parts on it and uh, do just a few things to it to get it in running condition, and I got it running, but it was running a little rough. And I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and put the timing light on it, get a reading, and, and in fact, I had to tweak the mag just a little bit, but it's running great now. So I thought I'd show you guys what I do to time one of these old John Deere's. Now, I made a video a few years back of doing this same, this same procedure, but I thought I'd just kind of rehash and maybe, maybe break it down a little simpler than that last video. So anyhow, this is what I do. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is, well, you're, you'll need a timing light, you're gonna need a battery. So you clip the, you know, very simple to hook up this timing light, positive and negative off the timing light. The signal uh, clamp goes on the number one cylinder, which is the left-hand side of the tractor. So you clamp that on your spark plug wire. Then uh, you need a string to measure the circumference of your flywheel. So you take a string, wrap it around the flywheel, wrap it all the way around, you know, pinch your finger on the end of it, go to a tape measure and get the measurement of the outside of the flywheel, that length. Take, you know, take your string over to your tape measure, stretch out your tape measure, lay your string on your tape measure and get a number. Then these directions are how you get the timing marks. This came from a website, it was called jd2sillservice.com. It's been pulled down for a few years now. This fella, Dwayne Larson, I think he was actually like a rocket scientist. That was his day job. And then he lived and breathed John Deere, apparently, as a hobby. But this guy was brilliant. And he compiled a tremendous amount of data on this website. And then after Mr. Larson passed away, it was like a year or two later, they took the website down, which was a huge loss for, for all us JD enthusiasts. Um, so anyhow, I printed these directions off and was doing some work on a tractor and I just left them on my clipboard, stuck them up on the wall and kind of forgot about it and then realized a few years later that uh, the website was gone. So I was glad I had these instructions. So that's where these came from. So in this example, we're going to determine the timing marks because we need marks on that flywheel. We don't have any timing marks. So for this example, this was a 66 inch circumference on an unstyled Model A. So if we want to make timing marks at 25, 30, 35, and 40 degrees, it's a very simple equation. So for a 25 degree mark, you would take 66, which is that outside circumference again. So 66 times 25, which is the degree mark, divide by 360, and that's 4.583. So for a 30 degree mark, it'd be 66 times 30 divided by 360. So when you break this down, when you look at it for every degree mark, it's just that times that degree divided by 360. It, it's, it's actually really simple once you, once you do it a time or two. So for my tractor, when I took my string around it, it's 50 and a half. So I wanted marks because the tractor was running, but it was running a little rough. So I figured that the timing probably wasn't out too far. And generally speaking, the timing at about 25 to 30 degrees is where these tractors run the best. So I figured I probably wasn't too far from 25 or 30 degrees. So I wanted marks at sort of the extreme end of that. So 20 degrees would have been sort of extreme on one end and 50 degrees would have been extreme on the other. So I wanted these marks on my flywheel to see where it was running. So with that equation that we did over here, for my 20 degree mark, it's 20 times 50.5 divided by 360 equals 2.81 inches. For my 30 degree mark is 30 times 50 and a half divided by 360 is 4.21 inches. 40 
times 50 and a half divided by 360 is 5.61. 50 times 50 and a half divided by 360 is 7.01. So I take that same string. Now that I've got my dimensions, these are in inches. So this 20 degree mark will be 2.81 inches up my string. 30 degree mark will be 4.21 inches up my string. So I take my string, take the end of it, lay it back here on my tape measure. Be pretty careful you get it right there to the edge. And be, you know, be pretty careful with this. So lay your string out. Take you a marker and mark these measurements, 2.81, 4.21. That's what I did here. So I, here's my 2.81. 4.21, 5.61, 7.01. Again, my string is kind of, if I had two hands, it would look better. So I got my string marked up. So again, this corresponds to 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. Take your string back over to your flywheel, get you a piece of tape, you know, big masking tape or whatever, and lay masking tape up here close to the left-hand impulse dot. So on your flywheel, it'll say LH impulse. Now be careful that it doesn't say LH exhaust open. Let me get my flashlight here. See how that says left hand impulse and there's a dot cast into it? Be careful you're not using left hand exhaust open. There's another dot. So be careful you want to use this dot here, the LH impulse, that dot. Lay your string up there, or excuse me, put your masking tape across, you know, like I did here. So just, just put some masking tape across there because you don't want to mark on your flywheel. I mean, if you don't care, then you can mark on your flywheel, but I don't want to mark on this flywheel. So I put my masking tape on there. Then I laid my string up here and put the end of your string, put the end of your string right in line with that dot. See where I'm at there? Shit, now I dropped it. I got my string right there. So then I go, okay, the end of the string's on dot. I come down here. There's a, wherever there's a dot on my string, I put a mark on the flywheel. There's another dot there, put a mark on the flywheel. Come down here, put a mark on the flywheel. 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, then you're going to need to start your tractor up. So be careful, you got wires and stuff, you got your battery here, just be careful when you're doing that. I actually already took a video of that, so I'm going to insert that video clip here. And what I'm showing you there is where you're going to hold your light. You want to hold that light in the same horizontal plane with that dot. See that, or that line on the cast, that that line right there that's cast into there, you want your timing light to be shooting in a, in a level plane with that mark. Because th that's your timing mark. That's what that, that's what that mark is there for. Now in the video, I'm kind of holding my uh, camera over here and looking through the wheel to keep me you know, right in line with that. And you just want to catch the edge of the flywheel with your light you know, right, right on that mark. So I'll show you, I'll put that clip right here. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you're doing this. Now, if your timing is good, you know, if your tractor's running great and your timing is coming in at uh, 25 or 30 degrees, something like that, you're done. If your timing is not coming in at 25 or 30, and that's probably about where you want to be, you know, maybe you're at 20, maybe you're up over 40, something like that, then you'll come over here to your magneto and your magneto, is, a, is adjustable for this reason. It's got slots. 
So there's a slot on top, there's a slot on bottom. Loosen up the bolt on the bottom, loosen up the bolt on top, and you can rotate this mag. And if you rotate it back, like I think I was about, I don't know, I was about 35 degrees or something when I started this. And when I rotated it back, it went toward 50. And when I rotated it forward, it went toward 20. So that's how you get the adjustment that you'll want to get your timing right. So, you know, rotate that a little bit, then go back around and shoot it with your gun and see what that did. See if that puts you in the right direction. Now, I will say that if you rotate that mag all the way and you still need more, you can make adjustments in this governor. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. I went through that in another video. So I'm gonna put the link in the description to that other video where I show you how I did that on my old B. Um, but you actually loosen that governor housing up and you rotate the gears and uh, kind of set it off one or two teeth depending on how much you need. So I don't want to get that involved because I just needed a little tweak on this tractor and you can kind of see it was sort of in the center. Now I've got it rotated all the way forward and I'm about 28, 30 degrees. So I'm real happy. This tractor's running good. So I hope I helped you with this one, guys. I get long-winded, I know, but it's kind of a technical thing, but it's, it's not really hard. Once you do it, once you start kind of playing with it, get your mind wrapped around it, it may, it'll make sense. I hope I helped you with this one. If I did, click that thumbs up button.